we're at Bond Church for the Isle of Arts Festival and we're here to talk to Charles Dickens. We talked to him about all sorts of things, including his trips to Naples in the USA, his childhood and his love interests. We also discovered in depth what he thinks about himself as a person. The first question that we asked was about his rags to riches life and how it all started. Well, it was a normal sort of a life, apart from my father being uh, a bankrupt part of the time. Uh, I had the normal sort of growing up, uh, rights of growing up. I, I fell in love with someone when I was about 17 or 18 and pursued her hotly for years, but she had no interest. However, what is interesting there, this was a girl called Mariah Beadnell. Now, my father had just been in jail. I wasn't that successful. Her father was a banker, a banker. And I was this lowly person. He was kind enough to me. And her mother was um, fairly f kind to me. Oh, she always called me Mr Dickin. Dickin. I don't know why she did that, but she always did. Um, but eventually, as I say, I, I was in love with this woman. About 20 years later, she wrote to me because she wanted to meet me. And I did meet with her. I was quite excited about this. But... She, I, I don't know how to describe it kindly. I mean this caringly, but she was quite a lump when I actually saw her. And, but I was so impressed by this, one of my novels, Little Dorrit, which I was writing at this time, I actually included her in there. Um, and I sort of, maybe I wasn't as kind as I could be. But I did endow her with a very good heart in the novel, so I don't feel too bad. I don't know how she felt when she read it. Perhaps we'd better dismiss that for a time. Mm. So how many of your characters that are in your stories were based on real people? All of them. But what you should realise is don't try and pick out one character per real person. For instance, um, Nicholas Nickleby, Mrs Nickleby, is, I have to admit, based partly upon my mother. But then Mrs Micawber has some of that in. But they, I can't think of any that I wrote who are exactly a character that I met. They're a mixture of people normally. In fact, always, yes. What might interest you to know, you're probably aware of it yourself, is that my mixings have been with people from the very lowest strata, the really low people, uh, crossing sweepers, labourers, criminals, right up to the very top. I mean, right up to Queen Victoria, who apparently I'm very popular with. Um, so it's been a mixture, a whole range of people. How do you view the success of your books? In several cases, I was very disappointed about the success of them. Uh, for instance, Martin Chuzzlewit, which I had great hopes for, and I think is a great book, excited very little interest. Another one was Christmas Carol. Didn't do too well. So, there are some disappointments, but the one I, that I have no doubt about, and I would argue it to the grave, my favourite is Pickwick Papers. I should, if I were to live a hundred years and write three novels in each, I should never be so proud of any of them as I am of Pickwick. That's my... and I think my greatest novel, possibly, though, was Great Expectations. But my favourite is Pickwick Papers. I will not hear any criticism about that. You talked about married life. What was uh, that like for such a well-known author? Ah, when I married Catherine, I adored her. She was a beautiful girl. Uh, she had a, a, what I would call a lazy smile, but it was very seductive, very nice. And married life was pleasant. I had some pride in her, but she started to lose her shape and looks. Now, I'm, I don't think I'm a superficial person, but I did have to mix with with quite important influential people. So after about, um, I married her, eight, 12 years, we had to, we separated. I, I looked after Catherine, I made sure that she was financially provided for, but we did split up and uh, sadly, yes, we had to do that. Uh, as I say, her, she wasn't, um, someone I was proud to bring into social gatherings with, so I hope you'll understand that. But it, the Times dictated that again as well. We do know that you've been to the USA. Did you experience any difficulty while over there? Ah, 
Thereby hangs a tale. In fact, there's a lot surrounding this. I went over by steamer as well on one occasion. When I first went to America, I had a vision of America as I thought it should be. They were... It was a, a republic. Um, I longed for a republic myself. I, I always expected we were going to have revolution in this country. I still do to some extent. I always feel we're on the brink of revolution. But they still had slaves in America when I first went there. And uh, it wasn't this the free country that I thought it was, land of liberty. It was quite constrained. I was disappointed, and I was honest enough to admit this to people. And I fell foul of the Americans because of this. They fell out of love with me. Um, but I went again a second time, and I repaired all this, and we were the best of friends after the second visit. How do you see yourself as a man? I see myself as a very successful man. I see myself as somebody who has regard for conventions, both social and moral. Um, I see myself as an inspiration, perhaps, for younger people. After the background I had, I believe that um, I made good from it. I think young people should take inspiration from that. I'd like to think that that's possible. Uh, thank you, Charles Dickens. We're honoured that you uh, had some of your time to talk to us. An absolute pleasure. I was delighted to meet you, and I sincerely wish you every success in your literary careers, or whatever you choose to do. Not the law. Don't take up the law. <laughs>